Shalom, shalom, shalom. This is your brother Yael Ezra Ben Levy coming at you again with another quick video. Um, I know many of you within um, Christendom um, probably heard of the concept of the Great Exchange. The Great Exchange is when the New Testament Christ exchanged his righteousness for the world wickedness for he exchanged his righteousness for the sinner's wickedness when he took on our punishment upon himself as they talk about that is the great exchange that um that a righteous person will be punished for the wicked but that's not true. It's not a true concept. Because we could plainly see, even we can see in the Torah and um, the book of Exodus, after the um, children of Israel made the golden calf, Moses wanted to see if he could, if he could um, get atonement for the people. And he told Yehovah, I'm just going to paraphrase it to He told Yehoah that uh, if you don't forgive them to blot my name out, deal, deal with me. But Yehoah let, let him know plainly, the soul that sin is the soul that will die. He makes it perfectly clear. Now, I just want to read these two verses to you. That's from Proverbs chapter 17. And... Then I'm going to let y'all go. I'm just going to let these two verses speak. Now, this is um, Proverbs chapter 17. I'm going to read verse 15. I'm going to do this reading out of the King James Version because, like I said, many of our people trust the King James. So I'm just going to use a translation that they trust. And it says, He that justifieth the wicked... And he that condemneth the just, even they both are abomination to Yehoah. So we see that Yehoah say it is unjust for people to do it. Why would you think it's just for him to do it? Because remember, he said also in the Torah, in the book of Leviticus, he said, be ye holy for I am holy. So if this is an aspect of holiness, for us not to punish the righteous and not to acquit the wicked, surely Yehovah will not do it himself. Now, um, verse 26 of the same chapter, chapter 17 of Proverbs, it says this, also to punish the just is not good. So we can see it's not good for the just, for the righteous to be punished. Why do we believe the concept that the Christ of the New Testament, who was righteous and sinless, God will punish him for a sinner so that the sinner can go free He's going to punish the righteous so a sinner can go free. Yehovah is just and fair enough to simply forgive if you seek forgiveness. If you confess your sins, if you turn from your wickedness, he will forgive you. It's, it's, it's like this. Now, when I share this with you, you can, you can see it just doesn't make sense. But yet we're going to say, the very thing that doesn't make sense, we're going to say God did. It's just like you have kids. You have five kids. The other four went in the kitchen and they just made a mess in the kitchen. I mean, they broke. You know, they were trying to put out the good dishes instead of letting the oldest set up. They ran in there and wanted to set up. And they tried to grab stuff and reach for stuff they couldn't get. And they destroyed their mother's um, perfect um, 
plates, her china. They destroyed them. Now the father come home and he sees what's done and he sees who did it. They already acknowledge they have done it. And then the father say, he calls for the oldest who didn't do anything wrong. He calls for him to come front and center and then he whoops him. He punish him so the other four can go free because that's how much he loves the other four. And the only way they could be forgiven is he got to take the punishment that should have been theirs. He got to put it on the good one. You see how that doesn't make a lick of sense. But yet we say that's what Yehoah, the Holy One of Israel did. That he punished a righteous person. So he could let sinners go free. Like he has to punish somebody to let someone go free. He has to, there has to be a shedding of blood for there to be forgiveness. And we see that's just not a concept where he has to have a human sacrifice. And no matter how you say it, you're still saying it's a human sacrifice because you say the Christ of the New Testament is 100% man, 100% God. You're still in fallacy. You're still in error because if you're saying he's 100% man, that still means Yehovah will not accept human sacrifice. And if you're saying he's God, God is eternal. God has no expiration date. God cannot die. So no matter how you twist it, no matter how you try to expound on it to make it make sense, it doesn't. And right now people are hungering for truth. People want the truth and you got to make it make sense. Because for too long, we have been digesting things that just don't make sense. And then we try to, you say, well, you got to believe it with all your heart. You just got to believe it. Believing it with all your heart do not change the fact that there's a lot of holes in it and it does not make sense. So that's all I wanted to share at this time. This is your brother, Yael. Till next time, peace.